think? Do you think Jamaica is really right? Do you think the orange economy in Jamaica is really at a place, we talk about the potential of the orange economy, we talk about the fact that we believe that it is the fill to our development. We believe that if we get this right, nothing can hold me as Jamaica. But do you think we are ready? How ready are we really in reality? We are only as ready as we make ourselves be. We have a lot of work ahead of us. There are a number of, of questions about, are we really industries? Are we not industries? Are we just sectors? Are we emerging? How far ahead are we? We'll only be ready if we continue to grow and continue to implement based on the things that have happened before. One person will say, creatives have to be entrepreneurs and they have to um, everybody has to be a business person and everybody has to learn how to do a balance sheet and everybody has to learn how to um, make sure that they can do their accounts. Um, and then there are other people who say, but I just want to sleep. I just want to do my performance, do a virtuoso performance and go home and sleep and have somebody else take care of the business and ensure that there's a, a, an ecosystem around, around me. And a lot of these issues, again, are ideological. What we are doing um, to make this a reality is to empower creatives so that they can create economic and social value, empower, lift up their own communities and take their products global. So that's the vision. There are two key things that we are going to deliver because I believe in deliverables. The first one is within 10 years, we're going to create an art district in downtown Kingston. That means murals. That means an annual international festival. That means art events, performance spaces, artist studios, everything that you would expect to see in an art district. A shop where you can buy locally made Jamaican products and not just once a year at Modo. God bless Modo but we need to have a place where these products are on show all the time. So that's only half of the equation. Making an art district that is just as vibrant as Wynwood with our own flavor that does, that includes the communities that create all of these experiences, right? The second half of it is looking inward. So we want to develop our creatives because if you make a pretty, pretty art district and you don't train up your creatives so that the level where they need to be, other people will benefit. Other people will come in and take our lunch. So it's two halves that make the whole. One, the art district, and two, the creative hub. I got a sample of the golden era of the creative education, how it was being passed on. This is pre-Lime Tree Lane. Um, at the time when I was put on Lime Tree Lane, it's because I was already identified as an unruly child and a disruptive in the creative at my age so they asked me to go with the bigger children and so that's and so i met melita samuels because she was tutoring the older kids melita samuels wrote lime Shalene and wrote the first episode with johnny in it i'm saying this to say um that i've transitioned now to full-time comedian I have not done theater in over seven years. I have not done theater because it can't feed my family at the rate that stand-up comedy now propels my life. The big question for me to everybody in the room is simply this. Why is it that as Jamaicans, wherever in the world we go, people want to be like us? People want to have what we have. People want to speak like us, they want to eat like us, they want to dance like us, they're coming to Jamaica to do all of that. But you don't get the appreciation back home. Why is it that we don't support our own? And that's a big deal because even within the different spheres of creativeness, you have fight against this because it's a one should get that and re re re. Why is it that we can't do what Johnny, what IT, what my other ladies on the panel are doing now? Why we don't have more people pushing forward with these things? Because we are better in numbers. But I'm not going to answer the why's because I think everybody in the room knows. Because at heart, 
me have to survive. That's the me culture. And if you look on life as a me culture, it's not going to work. I grew up with my parents and in church and never understood why every Sunday when my father used to preach, he started his sermon by saying, no man is an island, no man stands alone. And do unto others as you'll have others do unto you. I thought he was preaching about me and my sisters getting into trouble. <laughs> but as an adult now, that is how I live my life. Right? So for me, for the orange economy to continue to exist, there has to be more working together as a team. The Tourism Linkages Network has the task of making sure that our creatives connect to all of those tourists that come to Jamaica. Whether they come by cruise ship or they come by air. This is the unit that has that responsibility to ensure that what you manufacture gets in there. And this is how we do it. I don't know how many of you have ever heard about Christmas in July. But Christmas in July is an opportunity and we partner heavy with JBDC on this one. We put out public art. Anybody have a creative mind, bone, energy in their body to create anything unique? Come and show us what it is. Not only that, come and display it in July because by Christmas, people will be using it as gifts. And we have a public call every year. This year is going to be our fifth year. And we ask persons to come with their ideas, come with their products. And we have panels including Bureau of Standards, JBDC, the bank, and many others saying, this is probably how you should tweak it. This is probably how you should do. And you are put on a show, free of cost, at no cost to you. That's opportunity. Thank you very much. It has been a really an energizing um, presentation. Thank you all.